This gun is very dangerous. Gun's hot. Do not ever, ever, ever try this. Fire in the hole. So if you've been a muzzleloader hunter for any number of years, my guess is you probably have made a couple mistakes loading your gun. Now the designers at TC have taken a lot of those factors into consideration to make a gun that is safe even if you make a mistake. Let's say you double charge your gun. The gun isn't going to come apart, but there are some things that you could do that could make it a catastrophic event. So we're gonna walk through some of the common mistakes that are made and show you where that point of failure actually is to help keep you safe. We're here at a private range right now. Everything is shut down. We've gone through this testing protocol before, so obviously don't try this at home. It's extremely dangerous because if you hit a point of failure, you're gonna know it. So the first order of business we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take powder, bullet, standard load, and then put powder and bullet on top of that. So a lot of guys will leave their guns loaded at the end of the year, they'll put them in the safe, they take them out, and they forget to check if the gun's loaded and they put a load on top of a load. So let's go replicate that now, see what happens. So the first load we're gonna put inside the gun is our standard load, 120 grains of Blackhorn, which is my preferred propellant. Pyrodex is great, pellets are great. This is just something I'm used to over the years, it works really well. Powder, bullet. All right, so we loaded with 120 grains of the black horn, 290 grain Hornady bore driver. So that's load number one. Now I will tell you that this is my personal gun. So I'm kind of sad to see this is the end of its lifespan today, no doubt, but for a worthy cause. So, this is not uncommon at all. Somebody hunts for the year, they don't shoot a deer, they don't think about it, they get home, they go store their gun. It's loaded. They take it out, and what they forget to do is to drop a ramrod, make sure it disappears behind the barrel, make sure it's completely empty, they look through it, they can see a little pin hole of light coming through the breech plug. Those are the two main things you do every time, every time that you load a muzzle loader. Look for the light, drop the ramrod, hear the clink on the breech plug. Let's say we didn't do that. We just grabbed it, it's deer hunting season, and we forgot it's loaded. Take another powder charge. So now we have 120 grains, and then we have a 290 grain bullet. Now another 120 grains of black horn, and our second projectile. Now at this point, if you were Using your ramrod that comes with the gun and not a range rod, it should be really evident that this rod is sticking this far out that it's been double loaded, but we do see this mistake quite a bit. So at this point, this gun is very dangerous. You do not want to pull the trigger. Just the weight of the projectile, so people forget the weight of the powder in front of the bullet and the bullet's weight all adds to the pressure generated inside here. Especially with Blackhorn, that the more it's compressed, the more it's confined in a small space, the higher those pressures go up. So we're gonna see if the gun comes apart, if the barrel bulges, but if nothing else, if you were holding on to this, you'd probably get a scope eye. So I'm going to repeat so everybody knows, do not try this at home. Do not try to replicate this. You know, we have gone through catastrophic testing before. We're at a private range. Things are shut down right now. So we know that everything's gonna be safe, but still we have protective gear behind us. So we don't know what's gonna happen when we set this gun off, but we are gonna video it to show you what actually happens. So Carl is a director of engineering at TC. He has worked for TC for how many years? Uh, 25, 26. 25, 26 Maybe years. More. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So obviously uh, Carl was a major part in the design of many guns, uh, specifically the Encore. So he has a great history of that. And then obviously testing these. So he's gonna walk through the uh, strapping down of the gun and the test protocols to make sure everything's safe. Is that enough? Yep. Now, uh, do we have a primer in here? We have a primer in there. Okay, we're good. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll wrap this around so we can actually pull the trigger remotely. So you want to make sure that the trigger is in a safe position and we have a, a long lanyard here so we can pull it remotely. Okay. Once we get in this condition, we'll pull the hammer back and then go behind the berm. Fire in the hole.
All right. Survive. The gun survived. Now remember, round number one, powder bullet, powder bullet, double charge. Very common mistake that people make. Okay, as you guys can see here, we do have some separation in the stock. So obviously the recoil there, let me take this out. So it, it broke the stock here. And that's just from, remember when I was saying earlier, the recoil that happens, that this was gonna give you scope eye, it's gonna knock you in the head. Right. This came back and broke the stock, dislodged the recoil pad. But look, nothing broke here in the forend, nothing broke in the grip, in case of the tangs in, in place. I don't see any bulging. No bulging in the barrel. No bulging in the barrel. Okay, now we're gonna try to open it. Okay, so you see here the primer is jammed in here from pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to lift it out with the extractor. Okay, so we're gonna to have to punch the primer out of the breech plug because the primer basically welded itself inside of this breech plug. Again, not uncommon because all of this pressure, because your pressure occurs right in front of the breech plug where the powder is sitting because then you have the extra projectile and weight from the extra powder charge. But as far as somebody catastrophically getting hurt, not gonna happen if you double load in an encore. Okay, so as Greg was saying about the overpressurizations, there's a couple signs in this gun that, that really show that what happened. One is the primer, the primer's flattened out and won't come out, so that's a sign of overpressurization. Number two is in the stock. The stock here, you can see, a little bit of separation and also the cracks in the stock. This was partly because uh, the pressure was being absorbed in the tire and slowing it down. If this was against your arm, you would have some uh, injury possibly to the shoulder, but the gun did its job and it stayed together. The first test was absolutely textbook. Tremendous pressure inside this gun with the double load. We cracked the stock, but again, that's not gonna catastrophically hurt or kill you, but we did have to replace the breech plug. And you see here, the primer is welded in. This is what took all the pressure. And what's incredible, this is our speed breach system. Quarter turn, take it out by hand. But it goes to show you just how strong this entire Encore platform is and how well designed it is to be able to take those pressures and only have to replace the stock in the breech plug. Next round of testing we're gonna do. We're gonna double load it. Another common mistake, you pour your powder down the barrel, somebody yells at you, gets your attention, your phone rings, you lose focus you forget. So remember, you've already checked that the gun's unloaded. You pour your first load down there, get distracted. So instead of having just 120 grains of powder, you have 240 grains of powder. So let's see what happens. So we're, we're loading. So the breech plug, right? So we know it's clear. Test, look at the pinhole of light, check it with your ramrod. We're still gonna go through the same procedures. Take our load. 120 grains of black horn. Now this time it's powder on powder and then one bullet. So now your pressures are gonna be higher because you can actually burn 240 grains of powder before you burned 120 and the rest was basically weight or a projectile. Now you're actually burning 240 grains of powder with one projectile. It's down. That's snug. Now, remember, if you had marked your ramrod, you would see your ramrod sitting up again. Visual indicator, we got a problem. At that point, what do you do? Speed breach, break open your gun, pull the breech plug out, dump the powder, knock the bullet out the back end, start over. But in this case, we don't catch the mistake. So let's go put it in our test device and see what happens. Gun's hot. Fire right. off. Gun's still in one piece. Now, what's interesting here is, see how the gun now has jumped out of the cradle. So definitely have more pressure here. You can see some increased effect in cracking in the stock. I don't see any bulge in the barrel, Carl. There's no bulges in the barrel at all. No. Again, this is just continuing to weaken, which is fine, it's supposed to take the pressure there. I don't see any visual damage. Again, no break in the tang right here around the stock. So if you were holding this in your hand and that were to happen, you're not going to have any issue here. The hammer didn't rebound or cock itself. So no excessive pressure came out the breech plug, right? No bulge in the barrel. Let's see if it opens. Oh, 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Ejected the primer out. There you go. That looks like a brand new breech plug. Now, I want to remind anybody, anytime you have a catastrophic event, you double charge your gun, put a double powder charge in or load on top of a load or anything, make sure you always send it back to the manufacturer to be checked out. Don't just visually look at something because it could stress some other part in this gun that you're unfamiliar or unaware about. So we're gonna continue the testing on this frame because we don't see any differences. Carl's gonna take a look at it, make sure nothing is damaged. We do have a backup gun, so if this gun is not safe to fire, we'll swap it out with a new gun. But right now, I mean, hold on, let's just see something. Ah ha ha, the speed breach. Still removable by hand. Think about how much pressure this just generated and I can remove a breech plug by hand. So there's no excuse for your breech plug to get stuck if we can do that with double loading your barrel. So this is muzzle loading propellant here, Blackhorn 209 says muzzle loading propellant. Not to be confused with smokeless powder. Now there are some custom made guns out there that promote the use of smokeless powder. Definitively, Thompson Center and most muzzle loading companies out there say absolutely no smokeless powder. It's black and white, there is no gray area. There are no recipes do not use smokeless powder, but there are some recipes on the internet, or just look at the cans, they're very similar. You could go downstairs and, and grab this and not think about it, you can make a mistake. So let's just go ahead and load with smokeless powder, just like we would load our muzzle loader. Now the recipes that are, are out there on smokeless powder are by weight, so you have a grain scale. They may say, okay, we need 42 grains of 2015, we need 38 grains of Hodgdon 4198, whatever those are, but a lot of people will grab their powder measure from their muzzle loader. they're accustomed to this, so what do they do? They measure by volume, and there's more volume than there is weight, so this is a common mistake. So we're gonna take smokeless powder by volume, and let's just see what happens. I personally have not done this. I've never put 2015 in the barrel. I have no idea whether it's just gonna crack the stock, bulge the barrel, or detonate this. I have no idea what this is gonna do. Could send this into a million pieces or it could just be fine. I mean, the Encore is built for center fire rounds. It is tough and strong, but it's, it is not designed. For, uh, for smokeless powder. 290 bore driver. Snug this down. Okay. There we go. Smokeless powder. I haven't done this in the Encore yet. Let's see what happens. You've done this more than I have. What do you think will happen with smokeless? Well, with smokeless, it's a lot faster burn, and I would anticipate if we're going to have any problems, it'll be in the breech area, okay. which could cause a barrel to fail and possibly the frame. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to find out. I mean, I know the Encore is tough, but it was never designed for this, never meant no. for this. So if somebody actually just put a smokeless load in here, you know, and, and, and measured it by volume and not by weight, this is... Uh, feed this through. This, uh, this is what's going to happen. And I'll All see right. you later, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Gun's hot. This is really dangerous. Do not ever, ever, ever try this. We're in a controlled environment. This is meant just to replicate what a common mistake would be. And uh, we want everybody safe. Fire in the hole. All right. She's gone. Oh my gosh. She's gone. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Now this is, I'm, I, look at this, I got the goosebumps. This is scary. Scary. Okay, you ever wonder what smokeless powder does to a muzzle loader? This is it. So obviously here's your breech plug. This is where all your pressure was because you, you had your smokeless powder here. Again, it was by volume, wasn't by weight. Common mistake that could be made. And then, so you had the powder charge and then you had the projectile here. It dumped the gas up and down, split the barrel, sheared the lug off, sheared the lug off. Carl, look at this. I mean, this is, 
This is scary. This is absolutely amazing. Wow, the lug. Now, I will tell you, this is really impressive, okay? Think about how strong this lug is, how strong the frame, frame is, is, how strong the hinge pin is, right? It held the system together. Now, this obviously, when it went off, we'll look at the video, went right. up and over. So, catastrophic. Absolutely. Could have killed somebody. And, and just like we thought, it would blow, because it's burning so fast, it actually blew at the breech end. And that's one of the problems, is that's where all the pressure is released. Wow. And right into that frame. Extremely dangerous. Wow, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Move the four end screws off, everything. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the lug, the lug is just, I mean, the whole system stayed intact. So it goes to show you how strong the Encore is, but I'm, I'm here to tell you. Could have been hurt on that. Yeah, somebody somebody would have been hurt, so. And if you look behind you, Greg, look at the forend, and that's where you would be holding it. Oh, wow. Yeah. The forend is actually in pieces. Oh, yeah, look at this. Well, lesson learned. We were here, again, demonstration purposes only. Never ever use smokeless in a muzzleloader. We just showed you the catastrophic effects. Mistakes happen. Don't trust any of the recipes on the internet. Stay with muzzle loading propellant designed specifically for muzzle loaders. Even with the strength of the Encore, it can't withstand smokeless.